Good day. We're going to look at another activity for the cash flow statement, and we're also going to, uh, uh, combined with that, look at the interpretation by using all those formulas uh, before analyzing the financial results. That normally goes together as one question in a paper, and you will notice that that can often be quite a, a big mark. In this specific question that I'm doing, the mark, total mark for this question was 75 out of 300. Now that is 25% uh, of your total mark. So often learners tend to not look at the uh, financial analysis, the formulas, etc. And then they lose a lot of marks and it's actually not that difficult to do. But quite a number of the marks are actually for the cash flow statement so we're going to start by doing the cash flow statement first thing we've got to do is prepare the uh, retained income note now when i do any note i need to know at least the layout of the note uh, in this case the retained income uh, always starts off with the opening balance the balance at the beginning of the year to that i'm adding the net profit of the tax now these were printed on the answer sheet but you never know what they give you and they don't give you the third item on there will be whatever i paid out of retained income for the buyback of shares so it will be the repurchase or buyback of shares So I'll write it in so that I know that is something I need to look at when I've completed the note. The old, and the fourth thing in this note is the ordinary share dividends. That is split between the interim and the final. So underneath ordinary share dividends, you'll have a block with the space for the two types of uh, shares the interim and the final and we will end on the balance at the end of the year so now that I know what I'm looking for I can go and look for at the information that they give me now let's first look at the balances uh, on the extract from the balance sheet they give me some of the balances so I can go and look for retained income there now, I haven't got any figure for this year, but for last year I had 141,500, which means my opening balance was 141,500. After that, I need to look for the net uh, profit after tax. Uh, and to do that, I must go and see what they give me in terms of either the profit or the tax it, uh, it won't be in the extract from the balance sheet uh, the SARS income tax amounts will be in either receivables or payables if it is a receivable it means it's an asset it will have a debit balance in payables it will have a credit balance now before we put that in let's just go and look at what uh, SARS income tax uh, okay, so we, what formula we can use, we'll get back to that now. So that won't really help me to get to the profit. So let's see what else they give me. Uh, let's just go back. They give me the income tax. Normally they only give you one thing. Uh, and in this case, they give me the income tax and they give me the percentage of the uh, what the tax is it's 30 percent so they give me the tax of 293 100 and that is 30 percent now when we do that calculation there's basically a formula that we can use uh, we know that before tax will be 100 percent they give me a tax rate of 30 percent so what is after tax it will be 100 minus 30 gives me 70 percent so those by give them giving me the tax, I know that those are the other figures. Uh, we must see what is given and use what uh, the above formulas. The tax is given and that is 293,100 and they said that's 30%. 
Now the formula I'm going to use is I'm going to take the given amount, not percentage, that amount, 293, 100, and I'm going to, okay, not equals, I'm going to multiply that by the percentage of what I need to cal calculate and divide that of what the percentage of what is given. So what I'm saying, what do I want to calculate? The after tax. What is the percentage of the after tax? It is 70%. I'm not putting it in as per with percentage. It's just the 70. And divide by that by what is given. What is given? 30. So the 70, whether I want, divided by 30. So 293, 100 times 70 divided by 30 should give me 693, 900. And that is basically when they give you one of the figures, how you calculate whatever, whichever one you want. If I wanted the before tax, it would simply be 293, 100. Uh, what I need to is 100. It would be multiplied by 100 over what is given 30. So you can then calculate whatever figure you need. In this case, I needed the before, uh, the after tax. So, and that is... Two nine uh, six nine three nine hundred. I must just show you what I did. I cannot simply uh, do it there on the side. I must show whatever I did, and I took the two nine three. Uh, just a second. I took the two nine three one hundred. I multiplied that by seventy divided by 30 and that gave me the tax amount or the net profit after tax of 693,900. The profit that we make will make the uh, amount available more so I will plus that amount. Good so now I'm looking for the note concerning the repurchase of shares. So let's go to the information. There it is. On the 1st of October, the company repurchased 60,000 shares at 9 Rand per share. The average price at the time was 8 Rand and 4 cents. Uh, now, when you do the repurchase, you must uh, remember under the ordinary share capital, we'll put the average and under retained income, the amount above the average. So in this case, we're doing retained income. So I want the amount above the interest, uh, the uh, average that we paid. So I paid nine. The average was eight rand and four cents. So the amount above would be nine rand minus the eight rand and four cents. And that gives me uh, 96 cents. So the amount that I paid out of retained income will then be the number of shares, 60,000. And I will multiply that by the amount above, which was 96 cents. 0, 0,96 or 96 divided by 100. And that gives me 57,600. I'm paying for that. So it will make my amount available less. If I buy back stuff, I need to pay. So I will pay 57,600 in brackets because I'm, yeah, I've, I've got less money left after I paid it. Good. Then we move on to the dividends. Uh, and there they say interim dividends of 25 cents were paid uh, per share were paid on the 15th of September. Now be careful if we do uh, a payment of, of uh, dividends, we must go and look at how many people had shares on that day, the 15th of September. And so I must go back to the share capital information. It would be those who had shares in the beginning of the year. But then go and look at what happened after the beginning. On the 1st of May, we issued 
a further 100,000 shares. And that is still before the 15th of September. So on the 15th of September, the, the 900 that I had at the beginning, plus the 100 that bought shares on the 1st of May had shares. The repurchase happened on the 1st of October, which is after the 15th of September. So those two had shares in the big, uh, on the day that we paid the interim. So it will, I will have to add the two. So it's the 900 plus 100,000, which gives me a million. So there were a million shares in issue on the 15th of September. And they would all get interim dividend. So it is a million, which I must multiply by the dividend per share, which was 25 cents. So multiply by 100 divided by 25 or 0 0.25. And that should give me 250,000. The final... Remember, the final dividend it will always be whatever is in the uh, shareholders for dividends account at the end of the year, because the, the, uh, the amount that we haven't paid for the year is the final dividend, dividend. So that would equal the shareholders for dividends balance. If I've got that, I don't have to do any calculation because they, in the notes, they just tell me that there was a final dividend declared on the 28th of February. So let's go and look at the figures that they gave me. Uh, and this, okay, just they combined, they give me the two notes. It will either be on the balance sheet, they will list it separately, or it will be under trade and other payables. In this case, it's under trade and other payables, shareholders for dividends, and the balance this year is 206800 which would be my final dividend for the year. So my final dividend is 206800 I've got to add those two in the block and put the total at the top. But now be careful, I'm also paying dividends, which means it will make my amount less. So I must put it in brackets. 250 plus 206,800 gives me 456,800. So I've got everything in, I must now just calculate the balance at the end. To do that, I'm going to add everything above the block. It's those four amounts, and I'll put that total at the bottom. So it is the 145500 plus 693900 plus 157600 plus 456800, oh, minus 456800, and that gives me 311,000. And that would be my... Uh, the amount uh, or the balance of the retained income at the end of the year. And that is how we do retained income note. We'll carry on and do the other calculations in the next parts.